woke up to a beautiful snowy day and the weather is really supposed to warm up starting tonight or tomorrow and then into the next week or two so um, I wanted to take advantage of the beautiful snow and come out and do a quick adventure with you guys come out and make a coffee and just kind of enjoy the outdoors for the day I've been to this spot before as you can see I actually set it all up with my firewood and stuff but uh, I don't come here often because you can uh, it's not too too far from civilization but it's a beautiful little spot and there's always lots of deadfall and stuff around here so it's good to have a little spot that's kind of close and comfortable that you can just kind of escape to
because the water is boiling. And we're gonna make some cow co cow coffee. <laughs> we're gonna make cowboy coffee today. So I've got real coffee grinds. None of that instant stuff for this type of coffee. We're gonna take this off the heat for a second. And we're just gonna pour our grounds right into the water. Just like that. Give it a bit of a stir. Grab a little stick right now because I got nothing else handy. I'll show you what this looks like. Alright, so this is what we got. And we're just going to loosely put the lid over just so we don't get anything else in there. Readjust the fire. And all we want to do here is bring it to a bit of a simmer. All right, we've got a bit of a boil there. Gotta watch it so it doesn't boil over. And that's good enough. Oh, that feels nice. Nice. Okay, so. Oh, why does it have to be over there? Oh, I just get snow. Got my cup. And. Got some cream. It's so basically with cowboy coffee. I have uh, definitely done this before on my channel, but it's been a while, so. Uh, with cowboy coffee, basically you want to let it sit till the grounds kind of settle at the bottom. What you can also do is add some cold water. Um, but when it's winter like this, I don't like to do that because it's already like been sitting and cooled down. Um, so if I get a little bit of like not good to the last drop type coffee, that's okay. But what basically, in this, if you're doing this in the summertime, you can afford to pour some cold water into it. Basically what that does is just help the grounds settle down. But it seems like we're good to go here. So I will just... You want to pour it very slowly so that you don't mix up some of the grounds. Makes a pretty muddy coffee, but it's strong. Here we go. Oh, it's so good. That's probably the best cowboy coffee I've ever made. It's like not bitter. Normally it makes a really bitter, strong, bitter cup of coffee, but this actually turned out really nice. All right, well, it's a gorgeous day in the woods. Um, I found something that I wanted to show you guys. I made a video back in the summertime about my lightweight canoe tripping gear and the only thing I hadn't figured out yet with all of that was like a lightweight knife or cutting tool or edge that I could bring out with me, preferably a multi-tool, but multi-tools are really heavy and that's all I had, that's all I had been bringing anyways, uh, but I was looking for a kind of a lighter option of the same thing and I was in Bass Pro Shops the other day and I actually found one that works and it's a lot lighter and it still gives me multi-tool capabilities. Um, so I wanted to share that with you guys. It's called the Leatherman Free T4 and it's got scissors on it which is great in the backcountry. You know you need to cut something open or um, it can like substitute into your, what's it called? First aid kit. And it also has tweezers which can do the same thing, part of your safety kit. 
um, out in the backcountry, and it's also got like a super sharp knife. Um, it's got a file. It's got like some other tools on it, like uh, uh, a Phillips bit. It's got an awl. So really handy things um, in a really, really tiny little package. I know a lot of people like when I kind of share my gear and stuff and when I find solutions to problems that I have with gear loadouts and stuff like that. Um, I always like to hone my kit and figure out kind of what to bring. And so today I, I, I do have my Puko. I always bring my Puko, but when I'm deep in the back country, I don't. And so I thought I'd bring this little guy out today since I got it and uh, try it out. See how I like it. Have it in my pocket. See if it's, you know, too big, too heavy, whatever. And uh, I really like it so far, so thought I'd share that with you guys. So I've had a... Uh, I've had a lot of exciting things kind of going on in the background outside of, you know, my YouTube world. Last year I decided to start a new business um, with my videography. I've been super enjoying it and essentially I'm a freelance videographer. So I work with businesses, organizations, corporate events. I do real estate, um, trying to get into the home design and architectural space as well for, for um, video production. So that's kind of what I've been diving into lately, and uh, I've really been enjoying it. So I kind of wanted to throw it out there to you guys. If any of you is either an interior designer or work for an architectural company um, here in Ontario, Canada, definitely reach out to me if, if you're looking for some video work. Anyways, I thought I'd mention it quickly, because if any of you who are watching um, need some video work and stuff, um, I do all kinds of... I do all kinds of business related video work, so that's for like just if you want to create like a promo video for your business, um, ads and marketing and stuff like that I do. Uh, basically like the whole start to finish video production. And I'm just getting into the home design and architecture side of things, um, which I'm really enjoying. So yeah, if any of you has a business, you guys need some video work, definitely reach out to me let me know. My, uh, my new business is called Karina Alexis Films. And that's my videography business, which is completely separate of YouTube. I just love like filmmaking. I started really diving into my skills about a year ago, um, just pushing my my skills with videography and filmmaking and cinematography. And I've definitely found a new a new joy. <laughs> you know, I was really struggling to make YouTube videos for a while because I was just like it just felt so stale and. For, for YouTube videos, like, you don't really need to push the production value of a video because it just takes way too much time and it's just not worth the, the effort and time put into it. But, um, but on the odd big video where, you know, I have some really big organizations like partnering, then obviously it's worth it for me to go the extra mile of video production, which some of you guys have noticed on my recent uh, big trip there. Hope you guys are doing well. Haven't really gotten too deep with the with the channel lately. Just been coming out and enjoying myself in the woods and making some videos. Yeah, life is exciting right now. Always ups and downs, always disappointments in one way or another, but things tend to work out when you have a little bit of gumption and uh, don't let the setbacks keep you down, at least not for long. Just got this really cool old, old style, vintage style, it's not actually vintage. Um, railway oil lamp.
Well guys, I'm all packed up. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm gonna head to home now and start making dinner for the family. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's kind of a fun little outing for me. Got to try some new gear that I got and uh, just enjoy a nice fire in the snowy woods before it all melts away by like tomorrow. <laughs> Definitely stay tuned to the channel. I've got lots coming out um, over the winter, lots of trips planned and stuff like that. So as always, thank you and we'll see you on the next one.